Joining me now is Kristen Welko from NBC's Meet the Press. Kristen, always great to be with you. Now, a lot of eyes are on Georgia this morning with early voting kicking off here on Tuesday. In just a few hours from now, former President Bill Clinton is expected to visit our state to campaign for Vice President Kamala Harris. Just last week, former President Barack Obama also campaigned for Harris. What kind of impact do you think these events and endorsements will have so close to early voting opening up? Well, you can think about former presidents Obama and Clinton as the closers, two of the biggest names in the Democratic Party. Why are they waiting till now to hit the campaign trail? For the exact reason that you mentioned, Angelina, because early voting is getting underway in your state and other states all across the country, like North Carolina, also, of course, impacted by Hurricane Helene. So real concerns at the state and local level about making sure that voters can get their ballots in despite the devastation and destruction that was caused by Hurricane Helene. Now, in terms of the closing argument of these big names within the Democratic Party, it's hard to think about bigger names. It was really notable because former President Obama had a very powerful message to men, to black men, not to sit out this election, basically trying to create a permission structure saying that don't have reservations about voting for Kamala Harris because she would be the first woman president and really trying to draw that sharp contrast with former President Donald Trump. For his part, Donald Trump also bringing out the big names. He was in Coachella, California last night. He brought out Dennis Quaid, for example, star in Hollywood. So this is the time when the candidates are bringing out the the biggest people within their parties to try to help them seal the deal. We'll have to see who gets it over the finish line. More than three weeks until Election Day, Angelina. And when we talk about the former president, he's actually going to be hosting a town hall in Georgia on Tuesday, focusing specifically on female voters. Yeah. What's his campaign strategy here and what do you think he's hoping to accomplish with that? Well, it's a great question. Look, what we are dealing with in this campaign and one of the central features is that there is an historic gender gap. So part of Donald Trump's strategy, he does very well with male voters, but he's trying to win over some female voters. He knows he's not going to win with that group outright, but if he can chip away at Kamala Harris's lead with women voters, that could be significant, again, in a race that is so tight. So expect a number of key issues to be at the forefront, issues that women care about the most. Obviously, the economy, immigration, crime, and of course, reproductive rights. It, we have to state this over and over again, Angelina. This is the first presidential election since Roe v. Wade has been overturned. We do not know what the impact of that will be. Donald Trump has proudly stated that yes, he's responsible for overturning Roe v. Wade, but how could that impact his campaign and turnout for him on election day and during early voting? We'll have to see. Yeah, definitely something that we're going to have to take a look at. And I know NBC is releasing a new poll today. What does it say about the bigger picture here when it comes to the race for the White House? Well, this is a new head-to-head -head matchup between Vice President Harris and former President Trump. So the big headline will be what that matchup says. And then digging into the numbers more, we take a look at all those issues that we were just talking about, from the economy to democracy, abortion, what do voters think are the most motivating issues? And then we talk about that change argument. This is an election where voters are hungry for change. Who does better in that area? We can also take you behind the scenes of the Harris campaign conversations going on about how to tweak her answer about how she would be different than President Biden. Of course, that fits into that broader idea of change. We know they're discussing a range of different options, everything from tweaking her answer on immigration to the Middle East. Angelina. Looking forward to seeing that. Kristen, thank you so much. As always, Meet the Press airs at 10 right after 11 Alive weekend morning news.